Before we move on to our discussion of specific Latin metres, we should first discuss a frequent phenomenon in poetry that affects pronunciation and syllabification. It is called elision, which comes from the Latin a litere, meaning to strike out or to squeeze out. Elision involves adjacent vowel sounds. When there are adjacent vowel sounds without an intervening consonant, hiatus occurs. Hiatus means gaping, referring to the open mouth. For example, the clause I ate contains a hiatus between the I and the A. Note that the word hiatus itself contains a hiatus between the I and the A. This may seem odd, but it was undesirable to the Latin listener to hear multiple vowel sounds together without a consonant in between. In fact, many languages, such as ancient Greek, have the same preference. Spanish and French, which both descended from Latin, also share this proclivity. When possible, Latin poets tended to eliminate hiatus. This was mostly when hiatus occurred between words. For example, the words atque incipit contain a hiatus between the e in atque and the i in incipit. This was undesirable. When hiatus was within a word, such as in ea or maneat, it was usually ignored. Elision was the main tool in Latin for eliminating hiatus. Just as its original definition of cutting out or squeezing out suggests, elision is the omission or cutting out of one of the two vowel sounds. There are three types of elision, each of which has its own special name, but they are all generally referred to as elision. The first, simple elision, is when the final vowel sound of a word is suppressed when the next word begins with a vowel. In atque incipit, for example, elision would occur, and the final e in atque would be omitted. This would lead to a pronunciation like at quincipit. There is, however, no consensus on the standard pronunciation in classical Latin. Did the final vowel disappear completely, or was it slightly slurred into the next vowel? It is unlikely that we will ever know, and it is possible that pronunciation was different based on geography, socioeconomic class, genre, and time period. Still, we can adhere to a simple omission of the final vowel for convenience. Elision not only changes pronunciation, it also has a substantial impact on syllabification. Think back to what you learned about syllabification and answer the following questions. With the elision, the number of syllables is actually four because the e is suppressed. At quincipit. Note that when a vowel is omitted through elision, we say that it has been elided. An elided vowel does not count for metrical purposes. In at quincipit, the length of the final e in atque is irrelevant. Only the initial i in incipit matters for metrical purposes. Now let's look at the clause puella agit. This clause has a word that ends in a vowel next to a word that starts with a vowel. So following the rules of elision, the final A in puella is elided. It becomes puellagit. In this example, however, the A in puella provides important grammatical information, namely the case of puella, and thereby its function in the sentence. As a result, some authors generally avoided elision of such endings and were more likely to elide the final vowels in words like atque or other less significant endings in order to avoid grammatical ambiguity. Still, almost any vowel could be elided, although diphthongs, long vowels, and certain monosyllabic words like yam and the interjection o were much less likely to be. Remember that H's are not strong sounds in Latin, so they do not tend to prevent elision from occurring. For example, the Latin words atque haud involve an elision, with the standard pronunciation being atquaud. The second type of elision is ecthlipsis, 
from the Greek word meaning a squeezing out, which sounds similar to the definition of a literary with good reason. Eclipsis involves words that end in the letter M. In Latin, the letter M often indicates nasalization of a preceding vowel. What does this mean? What does it sound like? Consider the English word main. Now consider the French word ma, which means hand. The spelling is the same, but the final N indicates something different in the two words. In the French word, it indicates nasalization of the preceding vowel, in which the airflow used to pronounce the vowel goes through the nose. Latin also had nasalization, and M often was used to indicate a nasalization of the preceding vowel. Thus, puerum did not emphasize the M, but rather used it to indicate nasalization of the U. This meant that final M preceded by a vowel was enough like a vowel sound, albeit a nasalized one, that it could also be elided. An example includes animam advertere, which would be pronounced anam advertere. Another example is fructum emet, or with eclipsis, fructemet. The third type of elision is protolision, which means forward elision, which is like elision except the initial vowel of the second word is elided rather than the final vowel of the first word. This is especially common with forms of essay. It occurs frequently in the early comedies of Plautus. For example, consider copiendum est. We could use an elision, or more specifically, an eclipsis, resulting in copy and est. But instead, it is the e and est that is elided, yielding copy and doomst. Sometimes this is even written as copy and doomst, explicitly marking the protolision. Similarly, futura est would be futurast. Remember that when dealing with elision of any kind, we are dealing with vowel sounds. This means that consonantal I's and J's are not subject to elision. For example, puella, yam, has no elision, nor does puella, wallet. If you understand elision, then you are able to tackle almost any line of Latin verse.